Welcome to today's webinar, From Data Provider to Habit Changer, a Product Manager's Perspective. Before we get started, I wanted to go over a couple of housekeeping items. Today's session will be recorded and emailed afterwards. There will be a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. In order to ask questions, please use the Q&A panel that can be found when you click on the Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Feel free to ask these questions during the webinar, as well as at the end when we start the Q&A session. For those of you who this is their first time on one of our webinar events, my name is Ronit Margulies, and I'm the Digital Marketing Manager here at Prosometer, and I will be your moderator today. On today's agenda, the importance of research and experimentation, plus tips from our expert, identifying your unique consumer and what the data means to them, changing long-term behavior, definitions and applications, and of course, as always, your questions. Today's webinar will be hosted by Yair Givnever, the product manager of consumer products here at Breezer Meadow. Yair has a master's degree in industrial psychology and 11 years of experience as a UX designer and product manager. He heads our consumer products initiative here at Prosometer, and we are lucky to have the opportunity to pick his brain. Cool. Take it away, Ayer. <laughs> cool, thank you for the kind introduction. My pleasure. Thank you. Uh, I'm actually very grateful for the opportunity to talk to you guys. <clears throat> we had a very, very special, special year. Uh, we are started, uh, uh, a B2C journey in a B2B company uh, and the, the challenges that we were that we fa we are facing and the, the, this unique journey I thought it would be a good opportunity to stop for a second and 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 share some of our uh, special not only our our, our experience and, and tips and things that we, we've done and looking at but also you'll see some of the things that we had we, we didn't even develop yet things from our roadmap I uh, hope nobody will get mad at me here. So uh, I hope uh, you really enjoy this. Uh, part of the reason that, that this is special is because Prisometer as a SaaS company, we're, we're selling data, right? Uh, we're in the business of selling data to our customers and, and they're improving their service to their consumers uh, using our data. But in a B2C journey, that, that, that really doesn't make sense that uh, assumption that the more data we are showing, the better the experience will be, or more, the more engaged our users will be. So we're really not in the business of, of data. We are in the business of improving people's lives, uh, of reducing exposure to air quality. You can phrase it in a few different ways. So thank you, that, that's, I hope it will be interesting. Looking forward to it. Let's do this. Uh, a word or two on, on Rizometer for those of you who don't know us. Uh, as I said, we're a B2B company. We create uh, data about air quality and uh, pollen. We also have weather uh, and we sell it to companies which uh, integrate our data in their products in order to improve uh, their uh, customers' experience. This is what the company has been doing for years. Uh, and right now, we are creating the most accurate, actionable, air quality data available in 91 countries. And so, and about a year ago, uh, we started a new journey. I joined the company and we're uh, now aiming for our consumers as a, as a new strategic initiative in the company. And I'm lucky to be, uh, to be part of it. Our B2C activities, we have several things that I'm in charge of and, and activities that we, we're doing. Uh, one is our, our website, we have, of course, the company website, but we also have a dedicated B2C website, which aims at normal, uh, uh, just every person who wants to know what's the air quality uh, or uh, level of polling in their location. We have applications, uh, iOS and Android. They were developed using Google's framework called Flutter. That's a whole, it's, it's, it's really interesting actually developing with a cross-platform framework. A lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of interesting stuff happened there. If it interests you, 
if you want to have uh, someone of our team uh, talk about Flutter, that just give us a shout. It will be really, really interesting, I'm sure. We are pioneering there. And we also have other things coming up. We have, uh, we're planning for widgets and we are uh, wearables. We, are, uh, we have very interesting opportunities in, across the industry, uh, the real estate market. So yeah, we're doing a lot of interesting stuff for our B2C and relying on the same data that we're providing for the B2B business. So our quality data, Poland, the same thing. Before we, we dive deeper into, into the, the changing behavior and, and, and the psychology behind it, uh, in order to maximize the chances of anyone online who wants to incorporate some of our experience into their product, some of our process and the, the learnings that we have, I feel it's really important to, do the, to start a bit with the basics. Uh, and well, I'm, I'm not going to even try in such a short webinar to cover all the aspects or even, or even the majority of aspects regarding user research and, and the experimentation. And, and, and I'm pretty sure most of you are, are acquainted with all the different uh, best practices in, in, in that. Uh, but, but we have a very nice experience with a couple of things that I think if you do them, you will uh, benefit a lot. And also, if you're not doing anything of what I'm about to tell you and show you, uh, any chance or any uh, effort that you, you will do to change people's habits, people's behavior will probably fail. And I'm sure you're going to understand what I'm talking about in just a moment. With research, as I said, the most basic thing, right? If you want to change a user's behavior, uh, you want to know who the user are, who the user is, right? Uh, uh, books were written about persona creation. Uh, I can point you towards some very good resources on YouTube, but there's something that we did here that actually worked really well. We called it reverse engineering your personas. And, and that means you start with a competitive analysis. We did that by uh, taking a very close look at all the different website applications that are in our industry, right? Uh, some only weather, but others are quality. Uh, and we did a couple of things. First, we noted what are the main features that they're providing. That helped us identify opportunities, not only for specific features, but as a, as a general kind of strategic direction. That helped us see in clarity where we're going in, uh, in, the, long, in the long run, uh, where can we do better? And, and that was really, really helpful for us in, in doing the roadmap. And the second thing is when you look at the website, for example, that shows only educational content re related to air quality, of course, then you know that the persona that this specific website was aiming for is maybe a teacher, right? Or somebody maybe in informal education. But that's definitely what they're looking at. If you're looking at a different website that you see a lot of information about legislation and things related to government rules and, and things like that, then you know it's a whole different, a whole different player. Right? They're looking at a different persona. Doing that, we could reverse engineer our own personas. And it's not that we didn't do any other type of research, but it definitely said, uh, validated our assumptions and helped us be a confident with the personas that we were looking at from the beginning. So I really recommend you guys doing that, no matter in what state you are in your uh, venture. The second thing is using social networks to learn. I cannot express the importance of getting intimate acquaintance with your users and hear them speak. And, and when you, what for us, it meant opening and, and being very active in content creation, in Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, we, had se we have several accounts. And uh, for example, you, you publish a piece of content. It can be a little tweet. It doesn't have to be a, a whole blog that you just wrote. And you see how people react to it. And you start following the, expert and the experts. And, and, you, and you participate in the discussion. To give you an example of how that was useful for us, one of, the, of our uh, more important products, we developed a, a, an air, a real estate air quality report uh, was born out of, a, of, of discussions we, we saw mainly in the UK, 
uh, around air quality between in the social network, mainly on Twitter. So that was screaming out loud how much people want to know about air quality when they're purchasing a house or a, a real estate, and it really helped us. So I strongly recommend you get involved dive into into the social networks and learn as much as you can there. And, and there you actually are learning their pains, their motivations, Absolutely. the things that drive them. Absolutely. You will hear anything from an expert uh, publishing a very important article, and you, you need to be the expert. You need to be up to date. And also somebody complaining that his neighbor just uh, uh, lit his uh, wood stove and is uh, causing a lot of smoke in the neighborhood and he's pissed off. So it's... It's the terminology, it's the nuances. So yeah, it's, it's wonderful. I strongly recommend it. The next thing is experimentation. Uh, again, loads of, loads of opportunities to learn out there uh, about the importance of MVP mindset. Uh, but here at Brizometer, uh, this is how we do it. Maybe it, it will work for you too. We, have, we first do a proof of concept inside a company and we see whether something is feasible technically, that's the very first step, that's kind of kind of obvious. Then we do not release any product out there without doing some kind of MVP with it. On the two screens on the right, you can see a, 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 on, the, a, on the example, on, on the left example, you see a button a, named Stay Tuned, and it's a feature called Family Hub. It's, the, it's a feature that we are uh, developing uh, right now, actually. Uh, and that button just, you see an example, right? You see a nice graphics of, of our intention and what we think about it and what we think it is the right direction for it. And then if you click it, you just, we tell you, okay, that's, we're gonna, that's under development. We're gonna send, we can send you an email when it's ready. And just by doing this simple graphic without any substantial code behind it, we just gathered hundreds of emails of people who are interested in this feature and, it's, and we validate it without doing anything. So if you're not doing this type of work, uh, you, you'll, you'll probably uh, be working much harder than you have to. And then uh, from what you hear next about changing behavior, which really requires a lot of, a lot of experimentation, then it's really vital. So I strongly recommend it. The second one is A-B testing. We are doing it using Firebase, Really basic stuff. What you see on the on the right are cards on the bottom. This is the main navigation in our application, and there are some cards that are out of sight. Theory shows and tells us that what's out of sight is is will be used less uh, frequently. So what we do with A/B testing is just changing the the order of the cards to see how much impact uh, we do with with that test, and we. Uh, being completely honest, we changed the order of the cards on it and we didn't see any, any change. <laughs> and that kind of surprised us, but that's part of the, part of the important thing. We, we're ready to fail, we're ready, we come as naive scientists, and we're ready to be surprised. In this case, we were actually surprised. So this is the basics of it. So does this yeah. method, does this method get your validate how our data is presented to the end user? This validates the user interface that's true but is it's not only that it helps us understand uh, deeper meanings of what we're doing uh, is data uh, what it helps us validate more substantial concepts that we're we're uh, we're going for let me let me show you an example i think this may will make it clear this is garmin's application garmin is a wearable uh, one of the most common uh, fitness uh, watches out there. And their application allows you, when you wear the watch at night, which I have, uh, it allows you to track your sleep. And now you see on the screenshot, this guy, it's not me. I did not, I did I not sleep. Say, are you telling no, no, us no. that you sleep eight hours a night? Do you have kids? <laughs> no chance. I did not sleep seven hours, 56 minutes in a long time. Uh, but what you see here is data. Right, and so in this is what I meant. I um, when I bought the, the watch, I wore it for the first uh, first time. I went to sleep. I woke up in the morning. I checked my sleep. I was really excited to see what uh, what happened at night, and it showed me the data, and it was fun. I admit it was really fun. The first night it worked great. The second night I checked it again. I did it maybe for a week, and then it started fading. 
So curiosity and novelty did the trick for about a week, but it wasn't sustainable. Yeah, you, it doesn't. It doesn't. What go was through. missing? I mean, if you wore the same watch, okay, let's 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 do this. If you wore Garmin on your hand because you want to know something about your sleep, what what questions would you ask yourself? I would want to know how well I slept this week. Right. And if I didn't sleep well, I would mm -hmm. maybe want to have some recommendations on how to sleep better. Maybe mm -hmm. it could ask me some questions about my behavior during the day. Exactly. Exactly. My thought exactly. I, I, my question was, how can I improve my sleep? And they're giving me data about how was it my sleep. So they completely, in a way, they missed my intention when I started using their, this feature. They did not manage to create a habit for me that sustained over time, or just because of pure motivation, which I talk about later, I kept using it a bit, but that's it. It was, it was over really quick. And that's one example. Another example is here from Strava. We'll be, we'll be talking a bit about fitness app today, guys. So the, these are the examples we're looking at. So Strava, right? Look how much data they're giving you and what we're trying to find on the screen when it where is the raw data here out of the 100 percent i i see very little oh i found it but only because you pointed me in the right direction with your app. yeah i know that was easy to find with your big arrow and the raw data thing but this is this is my point uh, fitness apps a couple of years ago they started with just showing you raw data and and now it's such a small part of the entire experience because psychological needs are, are achieved through the achievements and get, get different gamification and game mechanics that they that they have here. Social yeah. sharing. Yeah, absolutely. Social is a huge part of fitness apps today. Personalization. It's not about the data. This is what this is my point exactly. And still I think there's a way to go even here because over time, let, let me ask you a question. Did you ever did you ever download a fitness app? Be I honest. Downloaded a fitness app or two. <laughs> Erased and then downloaded another fitness app or two. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Okay, okay. And did your uh, fitness app include a safety button? Not one of my fitness apps included a safety button. And the times that I've tripped and fall in my run, mm -hmm. it might have been handy. Okay, okay. My point exactly. If you're looking at, uh, you want to catch habits, catch engagement, and, and, and pinpoint behavior in the right way, you need to look at it in a more holistic way and, under, and again now you understand why experimentation and, and research is so important how else would we know that a safety button might be something important for, for our users right that's or, the, that's or the if thing. you offer them a high impact video and then ask them if they were short of breath they say yes the next time you offer them a lower impact video within their interest exactly so my point here look beyond the just task completion and it's not about the data anymore. On the right, you see Maslow's Pyramid of Needs. It's a motivational theory that, that assumes that once you have the basic needs uh, uh, fulfilled, you can go up the pyramid until you're in self-actualization, which is the, the, mo the highest you can go. And, and motivation wo works its way, its way from bottom up. And these are, I'm showing this to you for some inspiration. Where can you look for uh, the more uh, uh, interesting features that are not just about the task itself, a broader perspective, which is really important when you're about to change people's lives, maybe create new habits. That's the, that's the point to make. So really data is not enough. Data is not enough for us. Uh, what we know now at Prisometer is we can have the best air quality data, the most accurate air quality data in the world, but we will not have the most engaged users. We will not do the impact that we want to have. We will not complete our mission. We want to improve people's lives if we don't change people's behavior and create a new habit. And as an example on the right, you can see our recommendations for a, a, a sensitive populations, or such as children, pregnant women, that takes the raw data and brings it, bring it, brings it to the next level. And these are personalized, personalized recommendations that help people 
change their behavior. And this is just the start. We're just which scratching. Is, which is really important if you have an audience as wide as ours, if your yeah. product is, because you're going to be touching every kind of population, every sensitivity, any type of, you know, asthma, mm-hmm. elderly, mm-hmm. pregnant, athlete. These are things you have to take into consideration. For us? Beyond the data. Yes. Maybe people online, they have a different crowd, they have different types of users, and, and their opportunity we are to twist the data and, and improve it and digest it. Uh, that's that's going to lie elsewhere. Mm-hmm. So what does it mean to change behavior for us? Changing behavior, again, that's the next step that you guys need to do for your, for your, in your own domain. Changing behavior for us is becoming air quality aware. That means you are aware of air quality in every step you take during the day with small decisions such as where do you walk, uh, what street do you walk in to work, up to what buy do you house, uh, what, where do you buy your next home, okay? So everywhere you're air quality aware. You check the air quality regularly. If you're not checking it, we want people to, be, to have the habit of I wake up in the morning and I check the air quality to know what it's gonna be today so I can do some planning. Okay, that's being, that regular, doing regularly is really important. And the last part, minimizing exposure to poor air quality. This is the bottom line. This is the bottom line. If we manage to do this for people, we, we won. They won, we won, everybody's happy. On the right, you can see an example of how we impact people's life with our fire alerts, which again, obviously have huge effect on the quality of air. And that's something that we're, again, giving to users, not just the data, but also what can you do with it? And, and we're just scratching the surface, guys. It's a journey, and I'm not gonna, not gonna lie to you. It's something we're, we're starting, and, and it's a journey, and we're, I'm sharing with you the, just the start. I, I, you, mentioned, you, mentioned my, uh, you mentioned my background, so I had to bring some theory in, to the table. Remember when I said that? Yeah, you have a background in psychology. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I, I like going back a bit and and and, and yeah, bringing some theories. Uh, but I only do it when theory is is actionable, and and I, I like to do that. So, cryptology, for those of you who don't know it, is how, in the essence is how you use technology in order to change people's behavior. I know when it. Persuasion sounds bad, I know. We're in the business of improving lives. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so BJ Fogg is a doctor from Stanford University. He's been researching cryptology for many years now, uh, and it's very, very interesting. It's how, uh, and I really recommend you dive deep, deeper into that if, you're, if we're in the same business of changing behavior. Uh, and on the left, you see a classic example of it. Uh, it's a, a daily exposure. Uh, I told you one of the things we're doing with our research is understanding what people need, right? So people want to understand that what the quality of air has been during the day. Uh, how, much, how many hours was the air better? And, and we're experimenting. So that's, that's one of our, this is one of our experiments. Uh, and once you look at it, it impacts your motivation, it impacts your perception, it impacts your attitude and, be, and obviously behavior. So this is what the cryptology is about, technology to change behavior. And I'm sorry I had to show an equation. Nah. Everybody likes equations, mm-hmm. but this time it's, 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 it's friendly, I promise, and, and it's really useful. So how do we change behavior? What is it? How do we change behavior? How do we change behavior? <laughs> do we okay, so to change behavior, we need three ingredients. Uh, we need to have the motivation, we need to have the ability, and we need a trigger. And it's as simple as it sounds. If I want to uh, change somebody's uh, behavior, I need to have some kind, build the motivation. Motivation can be built with its, its environment. It can, it can be built in many, many different ways then I need him to feel that he's able to change his behavior, no matter what it is. I need to have some sense of, of, of uh, self-efficacy. And then the trigger, what makes him 
uh, change that specific behavior. We need clues. And using it in an application, using technology, we can do all of that. That's a great opportunity for us. Can you give us an example? A real world example? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. And 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 by the way, this will work not only for a, a, it will work on any kind of behavior. It can be a, a, a small one, but the catch here, it works. It will work only for the short term and not for the long term. Okay. And let me let me explain, and we will do an example as well. If I want to run a marathon, okay, I, I'm currently a couch potato, I, I decide I'm really motivated and I'm deciding that tomorrow I'm going to run a marathon. I'm not able to do that because I don't have the ability, right? The ability is missing no matter what the trigger is and what the motivation is, it will not work, right? So tiny habits are the only way not only to create, to change large goals and large like, scale behaviors, but also create long-term change in behavior. And this is critical for all of us. We want not to, if I'm a couch today, I want to train every day for an hour. I'm not going to start from the couch, go out and, and, and do it for an hour, right? So you what I will do is, this, week. yeah, the, my uh, willpower will, will be exhausted really quick. It won't work. It's not enough. So this is what we do. First, we said we need a trigger. My trigger, when kids are in bed, I have a trigger. Every time, every day they go to bed, I go out for a walk. But I start with a really small walk, just the end of the street and back. This is how I start. The next day, when I come back, I need to celebrate it, right? That's part of my, my motivation. Woohoo! I walk down the street. That's awesome. I'm great. Great. The next day, I do it again. Trigger is there. Motivation is there. Ability is there, I go down the street, and then I can build on it, build on it, build on it, and I have a habit. Once I have a, ha a habit for the long term, I'm done. If you guys are looking, I know some of us are looking at uh, people who, who jog in the morning and say, how do they do that? How do they have the willpower to wake up in the morning and go out and run 10K? Well, guess what? They don't have the willpower that you imagine they have. They just have the habit. They did it enough and they built it step by step and now they're ready for, to, do, to do that without any special effort. That's amazing. So how does this apply to our consumer? That's a great question. For us, building a, a habit are small things. I want people to, I mean the big message would be from now on you will be air quality aware. Well, what's the, what are the tiny habits, right? So the tiny habit is walk on the far side of the sidewalk, uh, as opposed to walking right next to the road. We know pollution is much, much higher next to the road. By the way, if you're taking anything from this presentation, from this webinar, take this. When you're walking with your kids down the street, not only should you choose streets that are less busy with less traffic, but also they, since they're much uh, they're about the height of the car's exhaust. They're breathing and breathing much quickly. They're taking a lot of pollution in here. In so make them walk away from the road. That's really important, and that's a tiny habit. So using the application, we're not doing it yet. I told you we're just starting. We're gonna tell people do it one day, second day, building the habit, and we're in the end we're gonna have it. That's that's our plan. This is what we're doing. So our takeaways, before anything else, we talked about the importance of research and you've seen how important it is in order to apply it. So whatever you do, learn everything you can about your users, social networks, work great. Experimentation is basic. We're not gonna, not us, not you, nobody succeeds on the first try. Be, be open for failure, be, a, be open for feedback and keep trying, keep trying different ways and A-B testing, you'll get it. Driving engagement is something you need to define for your own product. We know what will work for us, but you need to do the effort in order to understand what is the basic core need. Say, it doesn't matter, Maslow's pyramid, try and find what's the important thing for your users to drive engagement. 
changing behavior, you, you need motivation, trigger, and ability. And in order for the long-term behavior change, you need a step-by-step -step plan. That's the whole message. That's it. Thanks, Yager. That was super interesting. I learned a lot. I hope that you I, guys did too. I, I know it was short, so if anybody is still interested, I'm very passionate about it. So if you have, want to have further discussion, please let me know. Feel free to reach out. We're always happy to bring on um, more topics related to Prada um, and Resometer as, you know, in general. Um, we are going to take one question. If, if, and thank you for bearing with us, even though we're running over time. If you want to send in your questions now, please feel free. Um, they're coming in. Um, I have, there's actually a couple of interesting ones. If we don't get to them, we are going to follow up with you afterwards. Um, I recommend that if you are sending questions as anonymous, to please send us um, maybe directly to me or to Yair. We'd be happy to answer all of these questions. They're all very helpful. Um, the first one is actually related to the previous slide, and mm -hmm. I'll ask it in that way. Mm -hmm. um, when we saw the, the father taking his son to the park, and he, right. he decides with his wife's help, who she obviously has the habit, to yeah. go to the cleaner park, maybe not the closest park. Right. So the question is um, from this um, attendee, how do we know that, how do we know that the, their consumers are actually building the habit? Mm -hmm. how, how, what, where do we get this feedback that we know that we're being successful? Yeah, for, well, th that's a great question. And, and, and really it's about understanding it, what's happening with the engagement, right? We, we, for us, we see, we can track using our tools how often people open the app. We want to see time in the app. We want to see daily engagement. For us, we want to see how often people are coming back. So right now, let's just throw a number. We know people are on average coming back once every two, three days for the app. If I'm creating a habit for you, I want to see daily engagement, right? That's, that's for us. I, wanna, I want people to brush their teeth, use the app, so that's daily engagement. So the answer is in the numbers. You have to keep track. Don't do, don't do anything in your app that doesn't have an event that you can track, and, that's, and you'll see the habit formation happening over time. Great, thank you. That's really useful. I'm just going to both one more and feel free to answer as much as you can. I know you, yeah. you touched on it previously. Okay. Um, the, the question is what recommendations do you have on incorporating personalization? And our attendee asks in regard to our categories of the personal recommendations. And it's, it, I guess he's asking mm -hmm. from a general standpoint, but mm -hmm. also from our experience, how did we decide elderly, pregnant, and, and uh, keep in mind that we're coming from a place of people's health. Mm. So we have to touch on these subjects, yeah. but maybe it's something that you can sort of... Um... Uh, yeah, what you said is correct. For us, uh, we have a very strong uh, science, uh, science, science team on, on, on board uh, here in Prisometer. So we know we, what kind of pollutants are sensitive populations more susceptible to than, than others, right? We know uh, athletes are different than pregnant women, elderly, they're just the name of the pollutants are different, right? I, I don't want to go too much into detail there. And this is how we, we know that we need to give personalized uh, recommendations there. Uh, I guess for maybe for others, it's part of the, of the process of identifying your personas, right? If, you're, if your application, uh, if you're looking, doing a sleep tracking, let's go back to the sleep, uh, maybe you want to, uh, what type of people are interested in their sleep habits? Maybe it's people that have certain types of, of um, insomnia. And maybe, yeah, maybe insomnia or some other reason that they want to know and track their sleep. So let's see who they are and see how can we personalize that, that for them. Maybe it's by age, maybe it's by profession. I don't know, there, there, there can be many different so ways. So specific to their user. Yeah, and yeah that's, that's mm -hmm. case by case. Uh, that was a very interesting question. I can follow up with the person who yeah. did it, if possible. Please follow and, up with us directly with any more questions related. Awesome. Again, if we didn't get to your questions yet, we will follow up with you directly after the webinar. We will be sending a recording of the webinar tomorrow. I want to thank yeah, here again for joining sure. us. Sure, thanks for having me. And providing the interesting content. <laughs> and um, we will see you guys on our next webinar. Thank you, guys.